dear professors and colleagues, I'm happy to introduce to you my favorite character. So this is Albus Dumbledore from the books and the movies of Harry Potter. Albus Percival Wolfric Brian Dumbledore is a fictional character in Joan Rowling's Harry Potter series. For most of the series, he's the headmaster of the wizarding school Hogwarts. As part of his backstory, it is relieved that he is the founder and the leader of the Order of the Phoenix, an organization dedicated to fighting Lord Voldemort, the main antagonist of the series. I strongly believe this person is the most suitable example of a good manager, or even of the best one. And now I want to clearly show why I'm so convinced of this. First thing first, Dumbledore is a good manager because of his planning and strategy skills. In order to win a war with Voldemort, he planned everything to the smallest detail, including his own death. Knowing that Voldemort had instructed Draco Malfoy to kill him, Dumbledore asked Snape to do it for the student. By this, he pursued several goals. Firstly, to save Draco's still not completely damaged soul. Secondly, to protect Draco from Voldemort's wrath in an unfilful task. And thirdly, to finally convince Voldemort to Snape's loyalty to him, who was actually a double agent. Secondly, Dumbledore wielded extraordinary powers of deduction that allowed him to be completely unfooled by any charades which could fool even the entire wizarding world and recognize instantly any deception that may have initially fooled him at the cellist of flip ups. Thirdly, another important trait of Dumbledore is patience and generosity. He is rarely seem angry, but if he does, it is for very serious reasons. He remains calm in times of danger. Albus Dumbledore, as a good manager, is uh, evidenced by his strategic plan to fight Voldemort. And now I want to visually demonstrate this whole project using a Gantt graph. A manager, like any leader, must be able to motivate and inspire his people. This is the basic of the management function, motivating, which helps to manage and lead people. As headmaster of the school, Dumbledore often used this management function. And perhaps one of the most striking example of this is awarding of faculties at the end of the academic year. Dumbledore also was the organizer and leader of the Order of the Phoenix. This suggests that he used another management function, organizing. An example of controlling function would also be associated with Dumbledore as a headmaster. After all, who else but the headmaster of the school should control everything that happens in it? Considering Albus Dumbledore as a manager, it is worth noting that he used an open management system. In order to prove this, I want to give a couple of arguments. So, firstly, the situation with the hypocrite indicates that the headmaster used the open system. The second argument I want to bring is the situation with the protection of Hogwarts with the help of the Dementors. It's no secret that the true essence of a person manifests itself in difficult and extremely extreme situations. So, the professionalism of a manager is revealed in the ability to use the contingency approach. In order to demonstrate this skill in Dumbledore, I propose to compare him with Gandalf. But first, I'd like to tell you a little bit about this character. So, Gandalf is the hero of Peter Jackson's trilogy, The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Like Dumbledore, he's the one of the most powerful magicians. He was distinguished by a rather wild disposition and was very fond of hobbits. Gandalf destroys the bridge on which he himself stands in order to save his friends from a fire demon. This situation shows that Dumbledore simply cannot as a headmaster allow himself to commit such rash and strategically wrong actions. Also, the difference between Dumbledore and Gandalf can be traced from the following situation. 
in order to survive from the werewolf, the magician has brought uh, his friends to the house that uh, was belonged to none other than the monster that has chosen them to kill. Based on the above, I'm sure that no one else can take a place of Dumbledore, not even a powerful magician like Gandalf. This proves that the headmaster has a rightful position and is a master of the contingency approach. Each organization is a group of people with conscience shared goals, and Dumbledore also had his own objectives and tasks. Well, let's look at them with examples. So, the first object of uh, Albus Dumbledore was to ensure an effective learning process in Hogwarts. To do this, he performed the following task, accepted for the position of teachers only those people whose qualifications are high, abolished corporal punishments, held Quidditch competitions, and regularly hosted gala dinners. The second object of the headmaster was to confront Voldemort. And for this, he performed the following tasks. Dumbledore founded and led the Order of the Phoenix, collected all possible information about Tom Riddle, closely followed the life of Harry Potter, and calculated all possible plans of the Dark Lord. Albus Dumbledore's third object was to protect Harry Potter and his life. This led to the following tasks. Search for a new family for a boy, attorney defense of Harry, and protecting Harry Potter from the Ministry of Magic. Values. Without them, it is impossible to present an integral personality. Like everyone else, Dumbledore has a host of values that best characterize his moral compass. Family is the one of the most important values for Albus Dumbledore and the sad fate of his family members morally crypted him. Later, in the conversation with Harry, he admitted that he truly loved each and every one of his family, but was blinded by his ambitions. Dumbledore also deeply understood the power of true love. However, the professor's love was his great tragedy. And as Dumbledore himself uh, later said, Falling in love can blind us to a certain extent. However, despite such a sad experience, the professor continued to believe in love. This can be seen from the conversation with Harry Potter in the next world. Do not feel sorry for the dead, Harry. Pity the living, especially those who live without love. Dumbledore believes that there is a good in every person, only sometimes it is uh, very deeply hidden. It happens that only face in person awakened his best qualities in him. While ongoing uh, management training, we learn that there are factors in an external environment that we cannot influence, but they can significantly complicate our life. And what is perhaps the most difficult thing is that a change in one of those factors will necessarily entail changes in others. So. For example, let's take two factors from the external environment. The first is the threat of the conquest of the world by the Dark Lord. And the second is the threat of an attack on Hogwarts by Sirius Blake. On the one hand, is the cabinet of ministers for the fight against dark forces listen to the words of Albus Dumbledore, who warned about the return of Voldemort? then the wizarding world would have more time to prepare for an attack and build a line of defense. And the threat in the person of Sirius would not exist at all. On the other hand, if Tom Riddle had abandoned his scenery plan and uh, returned to a peaceful life, then the Minister of Magic would not have to panic, relations with Dumbledore would not have been spoiled, and Blake wouldn't have to sneak into Hogwarts to protect Harry Potter. The second factor is a little more complicated. Because uh, of the risk of Blake sneaking into Hogwarts, the Ministry's attention was focused on him rather than Voldemort, allowing the Lord to act more aggressively and openly. And if it were not for the first sector, then Blake would have no reason to evade the school grounds. 
However, if you look at this situation from a different angle, you can see that uh, if it is uh, were not for the threat from Sirius Blake, the school perimeter would be extremely vulnerable, which would give odds to the Dark Lord of uh, its uh, contest, conquest. But the fact that everyone is trying to protect the boy who lived probably infiltrated uh, Voldemort and pushed him to take more decisive actions. For the wizarding world of Albus Dumbledore, I think factor that does not have an immediate direct effect on the operations of organization, but nevertheless affect them, is a departure from stereotypes and prejudice regarding the purity of the blood of wizards. In the first arrival of Voldemort, this social and cultural factor had a fairly large impact on magicians. And, uh, this pretext, the Dark Lord started the war, by the way. He thought uh, to destroy all the magicians through the ways of which dirty blood flows, that is, the appearance of one parent is a muggle. During the second arrival of Tom Riddle, we can notice that fairy people already support this idea. This proves that wizarded society is slowly letting go of the mudblood stereotype. Thus, it can be argued that after a certain period of time, humiliation due to blood will become a theme of the past. That is, this factor indirectly affect the story. I hope it was interesting for you. Thank you for your attention.